The day has finally come. It's my NFL debut, and I'm a Cincinnati Bengal. And of course, coming out of college, being known as the number one corner to ever play college football, I'm a day one starter for a team that is in desperate need of a star cornerback. And the difference between college and the league is night and day. These guys are a lot bigger, faster, stronger. I'm not a little guy, but these dudes not either. And here in my first regular season game of my career, we got the Steelers. And so far, their running attack has been going crazy. When you're playing against a guy like Najee Harris, you got to bring your A game or he will punish you. But so far here throughout the first quarter, we've done a great job of keeping him out of the end zone and taming the run game. Even here on first and goal, where he would usually walk this one right in. In college, I broke and I hold every single interception record known to man. So I can't wait to get my first pick here in the league. And here on second and 10, my teammate Logan Wilson picks up a pick and he takes it back for six. Every chance I get to establish my dominance as a cornerback, which isn't known to be super physical in the league, I will. Even if that means cleaning up Najee when my teammate just got him stood up. I'm going to come through and I'm going to finish that play up every time. The way my eyes lit up, the way my heart raced when I thought I had the easiest pick six in NFL history right there coming to my hands just for it to go underneath to a guy for a touchdown. And what was supposed to be a blowout win turned into a close one, but we do secure a dub in our first game of the season against the Steelers. Five total tackles on the day, no touchdowns allowed, not the greatest debut, but I did play a pretty solid game. But these coming weeks, I got a lot of matchups that are going to truly test my skills, and I can't wait. CeeDee Lamb, Michael Gallup, Tony Pollard, Zeke, and Dak Prescott, we got the Dallas Cowboys this week, and we got to show up and ball. And my main objective for today is to slow down, if not completely shut down CeeDee Lamb, but he's already showing me a guy with a couple of years in the league versus a rookie, it's a huge difference, but I ain't too much worried about it. Man, it seems like we can do everything today but tackle. Yards after contact for the Cowboys this week might just be off the charts if we don't tighten up ASAP. I absolutely hate trying to play press man or even getting to jam at the line. I'm more of an off-man type of corner, but here I tried to jam this slot receiver and he absolutely embarrassed me. We're down here in the red zone and they're knocking at the door. We expect Z to get the ball and try to pound it in, but instead they do the complete opposite. CD Lamb gets hit in the back of the end zone and for some reason Shadobi didn't make a play on this ball. Coming out of college, I'm known as a corner with great speed, elite speed at that, great agility, just good feet in general. So I've been tasked with guarding the slot receiver, which I kind of don't understand. I just said I have elite speed, but the way I get cooked on this play, you think my 40 time was a sub 4-5, the way Michael Gallup goes untouched and soars into the end zone to take the lead. Man-to-man -man coverage gets no better than this. I play this route perfectly. I studied it a million times, but instead of me getting the pick, I give up my inside leverage and they're right back in the red zone. Under a minute left in the third quarter, we desperately need a stop. I'm sitting on top of this route. Dak knows if he throws it, it's going to be a pick. But he ended up throwing it to the other side of the field and he does exactly that anyway. Joe Burrow in this offense has been completely neutralized by this Dallas D. We get a few picks late in this game, but it wouldn't be enough to win it. As you could imagine, being a cornerback for the Bengals, I'm practicing against some of the best young guys in the league all the time. And that phrase, iron sharpens iron, is the definition of our practices. We got the Jets this week on the road, and we're looking to make Zach Wilson fold completely. But when you got guys like Elijah Moore and Garrett Wilson, that won't be an easy task. We jump out to a 14-0 lead here in the first half. We've been able to shut down Brees Hall in that run game, so our secondary, we got to be on point and alert all day long. Technique and discipline. Ever since entering the league, those are the two most important things I've focused on by far. See, usually in college, I would have jumped this route, no question, but I got to stay true to my assignment. And so far, even in practices, I think I've done a good job in not allowing or giving up big or huge plays, just playing more conservative, being true to my position and just my assignment in general. And with the slower, more disciplined, methodical play style, I'm not setting up or baiting plays up like I usually would. But I know in the long run, I'll get back to my normal self, become an absolute pick machine. With the expectations being as high as they are, I'd be lying if I said I wasn't a little nervous going into every single game, even some practices. It just seems like the entire world wants me to fail. We damn near pulled off a shutout on the road. That is until I gave up the only touchdown the Jets scored late in the fourth quarter. ESPN is going to be on my head about this and I know it. This week, hands down, is probably going to be the toughest game of the season, not only for myself, but our secondary as a whole. And just as I say that, the fastest guy in the NFL shows me grown man, real NFL speed. He gets into the end zone and proceeds to do a backflip over my body. And then they'll run games. Their run game exploded on the scene in a way that nobody could have imagined. They take off to the end zone for a huge, probably the biggest play of the day. And to think, I've been playing extremely safe and conservative to start this season, but an offense with this speed, bro, they got me on my toes. I'm borderline scared out of my mind. 
I got blurred out the gate by Tyreek Hill. Then I got to worry about Waddle. And then on top of that, they have guys on this team you don't hear much about, but they some low-key dogs as well. This is crazy. And never in my life would I expect to get burnt, toasted, absolutely obliterated by a receiver named Kiki. I would say our secondary is getting exposed, but at this point, it seemed like it's just me. For the most part, throughout the first half, we've been able to keep this game in check, keeping the score close, being neck and neck just about. But now it seems like this game is just getting out of hand here late in the fourth. And to cap off an 11-point win on the road, the Dolphins will hand the ball off to Kareem Hunt. He'll pick up a few yards, and just like that, we take our first L of the season at home. We're in these throwback units this week trying to get a win over the Ravens. We start this one off first play, busting Gus said was wide open. And to no one's surprise, after locking up every single receiver across the board, even Mark Andrews, Lamar is going to take off and go damn near untouched 56 yards into the end zone. For some weird reason, the last thing we thought they were going to do, especially in this formation, was run the football. They handed off to J.K. Dobbins, and he burst through a huge hole and rolls his way into the end zone to further their lead. Just before going into the second half, we need a big play, and that's exactly what we get. A pick from one of my teammates to slow down Lamar Jackson and his offense and give us a chance to close out this lead a bit. One thing I've noticed, in college, you got to bait these routes up like crazy. Those quarterbacks play extremely safe and conservative. In the league, they get rid of the ball at any chance they can. You bait up or give them any space, they're going to fit that ball in that window. And the legend of Justin Tucker continues. He knocks one down from damn near midfield for his team when they needed the most late in the fourth quarter. But, oh, we went down and got a field goal of our own, and now we hold a one-point lead with the Ravens' backs against the wall. But we won't allow Lamar Jackson to escape or finesse his way out of this one. With the game on the line, with everything left to Justin Tucker's big toe, he's going to kick a field goal just about the same distance as the previous one and miss it, and we're going to walk out of here victorious. I think it's safe to say the Ravens should have saved that kicker's luck for the one that mattered. It's a great way to bounce back from a loss at home with one on the road against a team of this caliber. When it's all said and done and they're walking back in with their heads down, Lamar turns around, we make eye contact, and then he just takes off into the tunnel. I'm going into this week determined to do my thing, to at least lock things down and not give up no big plays on my end. Next to that Miami game, this will probably be one of our more difficult games. MT, Olave, and Alvin Kamara, we got to step up. Third and eight, I'm doing everything in my power to bait up this route on the sideline and get Jameis Winston to throw one of his famous picks. But instead, he has forever to throw the ball. He finds Michael Thomas, who I end up rocking on this play. Jameis Winston needs to be studied. He didn't throw that wide open look I gave him on the previous play, but then he throws this into double coverage for the interception. I don't understand this man. First and 10, Alvin Kamara puts on display why he shouldn't be disrespected or underrated in this league. He completely embarrasses my defense, taking off up the field, walking in for an easy touchdown. Second and two, I call myself baiting up this route to the outside, and I did a good job at it. Gave him the look, he didn't throw it. I'm like, okay, cool, I'm going to be patient. But instead, here comes Michael Thomas wide open, exposing Sidney Jones. Everybody loves to call MT Slant Boy, Slant Boy, but the way he ran this curl, goddammit, I'm embarrassed. But the big hit kind of made up for it. What is Jameis Winston and Michael Thomas on right now? Their connection is on fire. He finds that boy in the back of the end zone in an extremely tight window. Go ahead and count them up. Two consecutive wins on the road. Joe and the boys went and got it done. Two touchdowns just in the fourth quarter alone. I have yet to catch a pick in a live regular season game, so any opportunity I get to catch an interception, I'm going to be proud of it and I'm going to put it on full display. And I have to show the coaches I am what they drafted me for, a ball hawk, and even if it doesn't show up every single game, I still have that capability. This week, we have a young but very talented Atlanta Falcons team, and at home, we're looking to put on a show. The makeup speed that I'm glorified for must have just vanished the second I got drafted. Going from the numbers to the sideline never seemed so hard for me. I don't know what's going on. And even though the struggle, the pain of me not having my first interception this deep into the season continues, my teammates, they continue to get picks, and I ain't never been no hater. The struggles continue. I'm in my back pedal. I'm playing this route the right way. I get Desmond Ritter to lob this one up, and what should have been a pick turns into a big play. The embarrassment continues. Who am I? My confidence is shot. I have just enough in the tank to maybe hold my spot as a starting corner on this team. But other than that, I'm grits. But one thing I can say, I wasn't terrible at tackling in college, but since entering the league, I've gotten a lot better at it. Seems like I've been putting focus, time, and energy in the wrong areas of my game. You know who Brian Edwards is, the receiver for the Atlanta Falcons? I don't, and I'm sure you don't either, but he absolutely suns me on this crazy play in the end zone for a touchdown. At this point, I'm ready to retire. 
I know it's a team game, but I hold myself solely responsible for us taking an L at the crib against the Falcons out of all teams. We're approaching that halfway point of the season, and so far, I haven't been terrible, but I haven't played to the standard that I set for myself and the public has set for me as well. You know, I thought I was going to come into the league blazing five or six picks by this point, maybe even more, balling out, going crazy, just doing the damn thing, and that just hasn't been the case. The flip side of that, having those kind of expectations for yourself, you got to have the confidence to come with it. And I'm going to be honest, my confidence has been low, a lot lower than what I thought it would be being shook up by these NFL receivers. And recently, I've been reaching out to my fam and they all saying the same thing. Focus on my game, block out all the negativity, all the hate, all the negative comments. Just focus on my game. So I came into this game with a clear mind and the mentality of I refuse to get bullied by any other receiver in this league. I am the bully and I'm going to make that clear. But that bully mentality, I'm going to have to leave that strictly for the receivers. These running backs, especially guys like Chubb, that don't apply at all. After taking the lead late in the third quarter, Cleveland will march down the field, and Deshaun Watson would escape a crowded pocket and walk this one in himself early in the fourth. And the rest of the fourth quarter would turn into a defensive battle. Cleveland would go down and hit a field goal and take the win, and we take our first L on the road pretty much in a while. A mid-season checkup, and statistically, we're not looking too terrible. 34 total tackles were amongst the top five in terms of defensive stats, but with zero interceptions. We're too talented as a team to be 4-4 four four throughout these first eight games. So this back half of the season, these last nine games, I'm about to turn my play up to the next level and be the KJ Franks we all know.